Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Hearts of Iron 4 Last Days of Europe with me, Papa Omega and Gross Germanisch Reich. So today we are going to start with a bit of statistics. Do you know which statistics? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, it's our favorite economy. So the Excel, as you can see, has grown, but we are really interested in basically just these three ranks. I went back and loaded up the save file that was uh, in January 1969, ran it uh, till February 1969, and then loaded up the one that I had for February 1970. And we can check how our nations have been growing. It's actually kind of cool when you think about it, though. Okay, we're starting to have a bit of more data here, so I'll need to uh, zoom out to see the nations that we have here. So, if you look at uh, February 1968, you can see uh, the statistics here, and then the growth over here, and the rank in sulfur iron. So, what can we learn here? Well, the interesting part is that the uh, Ostlandliga has been growing the fastest since I don't know when, but basically wherever you look at the table, they have had a massive growth which actually skyrocketed in the past few uh, years. They had 11.9% uh, in 1969, uh, or actually 1968 to 1969, and then 18.62% uh, in the past year, which is Unbelievable, that's actually matching our growth, and it's kind of amazing. Now, again, we have split Ostlandliga into uh, Baltisches Bund and Republic of Belarus, but I counted them together, and you can see that the jump here has been just amazing. Uh, still, they are and were before on the 12th uh, place in Solferein as far as their impact goes, so they are not any heavy hitters, but their growth is just amazing and they're actually moving up really quickly. Uh, bound to jump over Caucasus and other nations really quickly if they keep this up, like Hungary and maybe some others. Uh, the biggest economy in Sulfur Iron remains Ukraine and I'm really happy that their growth has grown significantly. Uh, they had, what, 0.45, not even a percent uh, from 1967 to 1960. I don't know, actually this one was not for a year. This one was, yeah, we'd have to look at the total, so let's call it, it was slightly longer. So let's call it 3.5%, which accelerated to 6.03 and in the last year to 11.45, which is amazing. 11.45 is actually a really solid growth that any nation could be extremely happy with. Putting them to 13.53 billion in GDP. Second nation is by far no longer the Netherlands, but uh, this is Finland. Yeah, Finland has been accelerating, well actually keeping up quite a bit of growth in the past few years, uh, but they are still on the second spot now with 11 uh, billion, 60 million in GDP. Third place is now taken by the Boer Republic, which doesn't really have a big growth though, so I think that they're going to be dethroned very soon. Though they actually moved up a place from fourth place in February 1969 to third place in February. 1970, but they are on the weak side as far as growth goes. Fourth place uh, was originally the actual Boer Republic, but now it's the Netherlands who really don't have much of a growth to speak about. They're roughly at uh, around 3%, 2.81 and now 3.22. Fifth place, Rusland. Uh, I'm happy that, that we can see quite a growth there as well, from 2.73 to 6.12 in the past year. That is decent. Sixth, Romania with abysmal growth of 2.59%. They really aren't accelerating. This is mostly because uh, they are not benefiting from any of the decisions that we have taken. Alas, they are going to fall f deeper and deeper. Seventh place is Poland, who more than doubled their growth. They were at 4.62% and now they're at 9.12%. Actually, they didn't more than double. They actually nearly doubled. Nearly doubled. Eighth place, Norway, growth of uh, 648 a solid one. 
ninth Denmark which has 1.88% uh, yeah that's not much of a growth either 10th actually is Caucasus now with decent growth of near 11% uh, sitting at 4.99 billion they actually jumped over Hungary who is now at 11th place with growth of 4.53 12th place Ostontuga as we mentioned 13th place uh, Slovakia they actually have a decent growth of 5.43% 14th place uh, is Leopold Will. Their growth is fairly low, but we actually might start investing into them a bit to, you know, drag them up a bit. 15th place and 16th place is Congo and Madagascar. The Madagascar, you can see, has a pretty decent growth of 2.64 and now 3.08, so they are growing. But you can see that the balance of the force has shifted quite dramatically. Ukraine used to be first, Netherlands were second, now Netherlands are fourth, Boer Republic was third, and now they are third again. Uh, Rusland was third, now they are fifth. Finland actually started up fifth, and now they are second. Romania was 6, now they are 6, 7, 8, 9. Then we had a switch here. Uh, it's Hungary? No, Caucasus. Caucasus jumped over Hungary. And. Viopold? No, that's not Viopold. Slovakia jumped over, over Viopold, Will. Okay. Well, and here you can see the overall growth. We are increasing our impact on the world economy. We started at 16.3%, now we are at 19.3%. So things are looking good for us. I'm happy with that. Anyway, uh, a lot of numbers. I hope you enjoyed that. We can see that the growth makes sense. And while we are continuing to boost our own territory, I think we will start investing in the Leopold Will for Valtung and Melitarstadt Madagascar to see if the impact is going to be there. Now, building up the infrastructure is going to be a mess, but is there anything? Administrative office. Uh, moving smoothly, we are corruption. It's going to be expensive. State tax on additional responsibilities. Hospitals. Schools would be pretty good. Prisons would be pretty good. But I think we might just build a bunch of infrastructure in our colonies. Yeah, you have pretty much none. You have quite a lot at the coast, but none deeper in. And we uphold well, we might actually invest into the territory of Boma and these two but we'll see we'll see not much to be said there for now we actually ended the episode with something uh different we were looking at the new what where is it uh the new advanced armor car chassis so we are going to have to finish that today a german war of Gmaft has been finished and we can go ahead and get the ready for modern warfare. We are the Wehrmacht. In decades past, we defeated every foe who dared to face us. The British, the French, the Poles, the Russians, the Americans. None stood against us in battle and triumph. A momentary weakness could never bring us down, and we have demonstrated it. Time will tell if the legacy we have fought so hard to secure will indeed prove invincible. Though we have not yet been bested in battle, the future is never certain. Only one fact can be stated with certainty. The day will come when we are tested, and when that occurs, we must stand tall, stand proud, and show the world that Germany is worth its mantle. Okay, well Germany shall once again prove itself as a military superpower. I don't know what that actually means, <laughs> if that has any any actual impact, but uh, I'm willing to, to bet that it's good. We get an event, Wehrmacht Reborn, let's hope that's gonna give us something, and administrative efficiency will begin to improve. So that's just seven days. It's not gonna take a whole damn time. So we'll see how it's gonna go. 
Let us see how it's gonna go. So, what about you guys? Uh, deficit actually jumped up, it seems. Uh, but there is a decent difference. And inflation would do well. Someone asked me in the comments about the inflation. You can see that the base inflation rate is now 9.15. Actually, 9.13. I can't read numbers anymore. Uh, we kept increasing it by the various focuses that we had. And then there is something called the natural variation of inflation, which I believe can jump up and down. Uh, I've seen it go as far as minus 2%, I think. So that one... We are hoping to naturally. F I hope that it's gonna naturally variate itself down. And never truly lost. Okay, so that's another event on the Antonin route. I think so. He still had a job to do, as he always would, with the main difference being that he was surrounded by men and women of his own blood, all of whom lacked the distinct armband that denoted them as Poles, a symbol of oppression removed but it meant nothing to him. In fact, it only served to further frustrate him. Every day after he would come home from work into a small apartment that can barely house one person, Antonin wonders what really would happen now. Clearly this was not the end goal that the Germans had intended for him, as Gottfried had implied. But what then? What else was in store for him and his people? One day, the piercing shriek of a whistle woke him from a daydream and alerted him to work. He was dreaming. Uh, he was dreaming. So often nowadays. Was that age or simply a want to escape reality? Either way, work was monotonous as before, only with somewhat less oversight from the guards, who seemed willing to pounce on any opportunity to harass them before. If life had to carry on like this, perhaps it wouldn't be so awful. He had a place to live and a steady supply of people to talk to as well as walking around a city freely, even if it was tamed by the Aryan and molded in its image. At, the le at, the at least those illusions of which lasted until a fellow worker spoke to him. Surprised to hear a voice, he observed who spoke to him. It was a woman, who seemed to be in her forties. You, she began, with Antony listening in on it passively. I can tell that something is off of you, like a pacified animal, you shamble about and wait to be put down. Is that right? That caught his attention immediately, and he hissed out. Are you ridiculous? What are you saying? What I'm saying is this. I can sense that you are empty, my friend. That you have wanted something which has been kept from you for a long time. And what would that be? He silently struck back, frustration already appearing on his face. An opportunity, she said, and a small smile graced her lips. An opportunity? Antonin repeated, the word echoing in his head. Was that now what he was looking for? In all his years of labor, he never once struck a German in fear that he would miss out on an opportunity. And now? To take back what you deserved for so long. You know as well as I do, don't you? She asked, as if she was speaking of some long-lost artifact. Say it. That alien word that has been stolen from us for decades. You offer me freedom. Wehrmacht 3 born. Our military professionalism will begin to improve. It increases maximum and. Oh, just maximum investment in army funding and naval funding. Cool, that doesn't really hit our budget then. Amazing. The Wehrmacht has experienced dramatic changes in the last few months. Under the leadership of von Traskau and his cadre of reformist officers, the armed forces of the Reich have been thoroughly cleansed of any political interference and purged of most disloyal, corrupt or incapable officers. What was once a ragtag band of mercenaries and unfit recruits has returned to its former glory and now reflects the Prussian spirit of its adoptive father in all its facets. The Heer is now in perfect state, with modern doctrines, improved equipment, and fully functional logistics, like a tiger coiled and ready to spring forward uh, on its intended prey. The Luftwaffe is the undisputed ruler of the skies across the entirety of Europe. It's a modern fleet of fighters, interceptors and bombers ready to teach those foolish enough to attack the Reich the depth of their mistake and hubris. 
The Kriegsmarine is now a force to be reckoned, fully stretched to dominate the seas and oceans, nimble frigates working together with powerful cruisers and menacing carriers in perfect unison. Okay, that actually reflects what we're doing here. While the Conservatives grumble about losing influence over the Wehrmacht, no one can deny that now the Reich has returned to the world stage in full panoply of war. Even the Führer can help a smug smile when looking upon the results of the reforms he had allowed. Perhaps Sotraska was right, after all. Not that he would ever admit it, of course. Raise the Balkankreuz. Okay, and we should have the first two frigates. Oh, yes, we have. Oh, yes, we have. So let's put them on the drilling fleet. You guys are still repairing, that is fine. And what are we gonna do now? That is the question, because we don't have anything to do here. Uh, I don't really want to do anything here or here. That just increases inflation further. Yeah, I don't think that's worth it. I think that the social market is worth it either. Monetary population, though. Token population, mother regulation. Drinks and subsidies, low subsidies. Oh, unemployment, policy drift. I don't think that's worth either. By the way, someone mentioned that we can see our population here, but I don't think that's true. We can see the monthly growth in states. Oh no, we can actually. Okay. You were right. So the total population is 155.56 million. And the core population is 15.27,000. Oh, okay. So basically nobody. So we have nearly 156 million people. Okay, cool. So I guess we won't do anything at this point because there really isn't much to do unless we want to increase our inflation further, which we don't. Man, this is this is really crazy. What's Cameron doing? It's going to have like half of Africa. Hmm. That doesn't seem right, but okay. So how are you guys doing on the new tanks? Oh, you have them here. You are, everyone is already getting them, it seems. Kaiva. We are part 2A1. Uh, how are we? I'm saying six at this point. Yeah, I was right. Six per day, four per day. Six point twelve per day. Three thousand three hundred and eight to be phased out, and that is not bad. And we need what was twenty three for the new armored car. So it's gonna take additional a week or so to get. Oh, come on. Brian, yourself out of our misery. <sighs> Yet another defeat. Well, the Wolfia and Joa are still resisting, but they have no, <laughs> no units, so <laughs> good luck with that. Okay, we finished uh, the infantry kit. The M70 Feldbluse. Is there a difference between these two? Well, there's a difference in the helmet. But I don't see the difference in the equipment. Well, there's M92 Feldbluse here then. Uh, this infantry kit takes 603 days to do. So let's go with combat support equipment. 
or advanced command support equipment. Portable radio technology has evolved to allow every soldier to carry a lightweight transceiver capable of single sideband operation and narrowband frequency modulation, allowing every soldier to stay in touch with their commander with ease. So division organization 2.5% extra, recovery, recovery rate is increased by 20%, cold and hot acclimatization gain factor increased by 5%, and special forces get additional 5% acclimatization factor. You don't say. You don't say. We'll have to throw dozens of factories at the new uh, armored car model as well. Because that's gonna be rough. Okay, I'm getting the entire. Oh, we're done with the advanced artillery already. Yeah, this is gonna take 71 days, so that's actually pretty cool. A Monday interaction. Oh, this one actually has effects. A 30 year fury. Just an industrial accident. A Monday in interaction. A here soldier dressed in military uniform sat on a train leading from Hamburg to Germania alongside several other soldiers and a handful of train workers. This time they were meant to transport some military supplies, so a batch of soldiers to prevent any attacks would have been useful. Right now, rather than worrying about that, Hedvig was shooing away a pesky train worker with the butt of his rifle, who kept trying to rub his fingers along the green tarp draped over the crate of military supplies next to him. It had been the fourth time now. What are you even trying to do besides touch it? Be annoying? Hedvig muttered under his breath, eyeing the young man in front, uh, in front of him who seemed particularly amused. Could you cut it out already? Get off it, man, the worker replied, flinching his hands away from the rifle. We've got an hour left to go. What else do I do to pass the time? Smoke a pack? I'm not like everyone else on this train. I'm not smoking up a storm just to make the hour go by. So, so you keep touching the crate when I tell you not to. Why? Do you get some amusement out of that? Hervik asked. You know it's not a smart idea to go against a soldier against what a soldier tells you, right? His eyes narrowed, but they didn't seem to deter the man. Like a child, he ran a thumb across the tarp and almost seemed like he'd go and uncover what was under it. But then he felt the poke of Hervik's gun, and then the poke turned to a push. For the love of God, man, stop touching the crate. <laughs> this time, the man retreated back to his seat and chuckled. Oh, come on, it's better than sitting in silence. Hervik rolled his eyes. Maybe, but... Sure, this annoying runt. So GDP growth rate increased by 0.25%. Manifest progress of the Reichschnell Fahrstrecken program will increase by 0.10%, bringing it to 2.05. The amount of sites repatriated by the Reichschnell Fahr program manifest will be increased by 1250, bringing it to 8000. Okay. So that looks like we might have expanded it a bit yeah we get over 50 percent now uh, i don't see a difference in in the lines but maybe they just grow very subtly a 30 year fury grigory has always carried the hate passed down from his father there was a spirit in him unconquered unbroken and willing to bend to the will of aryan scum but he had nothing to show for it, only working day by day to toil himself and serve as a slave to the Germans. If that's all he would be, and remain to be, then it was almost better to simply cease to exist. The thought to grab the nearest metal object and rush a guard crossed his mind, but never in the years he was working there did he carry out that glorious fantasy. Perhaps he was a coward for doing so, and would always remain a coward. Until one day, a shrill voice stood tall over him and the rest of the non-Germans present in the factory. He didn't understand much of their language, choosing to almost actively work against learning it, but he had still learned fragments of it, enough to run and piece together one crucial fact, that the first German worker would come work here, beginning that shift. Even though the silence afterwards spoke for itself, the guards didn't motion for any increased vigilance. 
Instead, they seem to show relief that their fellow brethren would work here. Grigory, however, had other ideas. Only minutes afterwards did he, the first worker begin trickling in, and once they did, the light in his eyes had shown in a way previously unknown. He could tell what the sinking yet exciting feeling in his gut was. This was the time, and he could get no other time. Perhaps it was the fact that the gods were waxed from the German workers. Perhaps the other Russians and Poles and Ukrainians decided to ignore the fact that the Grigory seemed to tense up as if he'd seen the murder, and perhaps the German that was approaching him mistook his feelings as fear rather than fury. What was for certain, however, was the chaos that ensued when Grigory grabbed the nearest metal object, screamed in a voice coarse and unused, rage overfilling every inch of his body as he swung harder than he'd ever swung before. The sickening crack that echoed through the factory was quickly drowned out by shouts and bootsteps, with the Germans failing, no, falling to the ground like a puppet, with its strings cut as Grigory unrelenting, unrelentingly continued. It took no less than six men to tear the murderous machine away from the man, bleeding profusely on the floor, and only minutes later did silence come over the factory once again. When tomorrow arrived, there was one less slave working in the factory. Just an industrial accident. Holy oh, hell. Well, anyway, uh, the inflation has dropped to 9.58%. Uh, the euro deficit has also dropped to 6.90%, and our debt to GDP reduced to 80.4%. And that was brutal. I think, I think I'm going to make some tea before we continue. Holy oh, hell. I mean... I mean, what's there to say, really? Not much, that's true. Uh, 